As my time in Vicksburg progressed, I met up with Narcissa more and more. Her cutesy yet mature, witty personality was her signature charm. She filled me in on the origins of the myth again with such vividness, it was like she was there. She expanded on Jacques' relaying of information explaining how, according to ancient cults, there were once several inhuman, otherworldly gods that made the earth into a festering cesspool and were worshipped by the cultists until the day the primal threats were sealed away in ancient tombs left to rot. That is, till the day they will arise and treat mankind as an insignificant bug. As you know, there was once a woman who was so afraid of death, so she called on the gods to preserve her youth and gain eternal life. She wandered down into the depths of the earth to beseech an old one. And the god she sought out was none other than that pale beast, the god of the labyrinth, I hort. But as with anything, there was a price to be paid. I quietly listened. Who could have fathomed that there were so many hidden societies dedicated to worshipping these unknowable, eldritch beings? And for what cause? Are they obsessed with bringing about the apocalypse and practicing their perverse religions to summon them? What ancient books did they have in their possession? And you say that this woman found an undead cultist who gave her secrets to communicating with Ihort? What did she have to do? Reprehensible acts that went against natural law and would damn her very soul to the darkest pits of hell. She knew the secrets of where the gods of old lay dead and where they would once more walk. She uncovered the truth behind our known reality and peeked her eyes into infinity. With the assistance of that pale beast, she could even travel dimensions without the need of ever leaving home. Life itself was an illusion, a cheap replica of what eternity felt like. My heart sank into the depths of my body, cults, an ancient, primal god. My mind connected the dots back to when I first took part in the dating game. All the citizens of Vicksburg wore cloaks, something that I should have correlated long ago. That woman insisted that Walter and the others were all one in the god she worshipped. I had become ensnared in a tangle of webs. Screw everything, I had to get out. Narcissa stared at me, her blue eyes reflecting her concern. What's wrong, darling? I just feel a little flushed. You don't have to lie to me. I can sense how uneasy you are about the cults I mentioned. But don't worry, there is nothing to be concerned about. I am sure you notice that the townspeople wear those garments. It is not what you think. Then, why do they wear them? It is rather simple. The people of Vicksburg have a weakness for sunlight. Tell me, have you ever seen any of them walking about during the day? I thought back to my previous encounters with the townspeople. Truth be told, they were able to freely shuffle around in the auditorium because of an artificial light. Even the hotel I resided in was dimly lit. Then, what about when that woman attacked me? She seemed conflicted about it. It was almost like two halves were fighting each other. Perhaps a temporary bout of madness besides, Vicksburg hardly has any outsiders visit their town. She was probably just overcome with astonishment. I did not say anything to further rebut her. I am unsure if I should stay here. Narcissus's eyes lowered in a crestfallen fashion. It nearly pained me to see her upset. Is that so? I have spent about two weeks here and I was never able to find the people who wanted to do business with me. To be completely frank, I believe that it was all a ruse to make me look like a fool. The blonde woman paused and thought intensely of her next move. If that is the truth, then I may as well explain why I am really here. My curiosity peaked at that moment. What happened? To tell you the truth, 
My life back home isn't good. I have a husband who is a raging alcoholic who would beat me unconscious every day he came back from work. If it wasn't me, he would go after our two kids. One day, he beat me up so badly, I... She paused, tears rolling down her cheeks. I was in the hospital for three months. After that, I somehow managed to escape his wrath and ran away from home. She covered her eyes with her hands and bitterly wept into them. Her breathing became staggered the more she let her raw emotions loose. I know I shouldn't have abandoned my kids with their father. It was a moment of weakness. I didn't know what to say at that instant. It was quite the bombshell I was handed. Without thinking too much about it, I gently embraced her. She was startled at first but she slowly melted into the hug, clasping my back. I'm so sorry to hear that. You shouldn't be. It is not your problem to deal with. I'm planning on leaving Vicksburg tomorrow. If it is fine with you, would you care to accompany me? Her eyes widened in surprise. Are you sure? I don't want to be a burden on you. No, you won't bother me at all. It's the least I could do. Her smile poked through. It's a deal. 